Welcome to our webinar. My name is Klaus Fossen. I'm Senior Product Manager at Corel Corporation, and I want to take the opportunity today to walk you through a workflow from 3D CAD data to technical illustrations that are compliant to S1000D or to ATA iSpec 2200. The workflow is very similar for, for both specifications. Uh, compliant illustrations, so I will cover the generic steps. And I want to start with outlining that workflow. So in today's technical documentation, illustrations are still a key component to visualize specific environments, steps, tasks, and Corel Designer is the right application to author technical illustrations, but authoring technical illustrations is typically not done from scratch uh, these days. So in the engineering, 3D design is the standard tool set, and we want to show you a workflow to leverage the 3D CAD data that is being created in the engineering departments by suppliers or in your own company to leverage that data and efficiently transform that into visible or clearly understandable technical illustrations that then also comply to the specifications and business rules as set in S1000D or ATA iSpec 2200. As mentioned in the beginning, this workflow will be covered by the toolset of CorelDRAW Technical Suite X7. The first component you will see in action is Lattice 3D Studio CAD. That is an application for visualizing 3D CAD data and transforming that data into illustrations. In the second part, we will then show you how to create from that raw illustration data meaningful clearly understandable technical illustrations for the documentation. Just to mention on the site, it's not always about leveraging 3D CAD data as source files. There is lots of legacy data that might need to be edited, updated, modified, and that's also possible with the Corel Designer application, the 2D illustration application. So you can access CGM data, but also CAD data like DXF or DWG files, PDF files, and a lot more file formats. That's just as a side note. So today we want to focus on the workflow from 3D CAD to S1000D compliant illustrations. I want to now start showing you that process starting with the 3D import workflow, which starts in the Lattice 3D Studio CAD application. I want to show you how to work with 3D CAD files. And for that, I open the Lattice 3D Studio application using the 3D import tool here that will launch Lattice 3D Studio. And that's the application where you access all your 3D CAD data as you receive it from engineering departments, from suppliers, from anywhere. So with that, you may need to access different file formats, 3D CAD file formats, 3D exchange file formats, and that's all supported with Lattice 3D Studio CAD. I will show you that in a couple of minutes. First, let me show you a few things with this file already opened. I want to turn off the clipping that you see here when the model is zoomed in. So don't want to see this being clipped in front or back. The model that you see here, first of all, as the technical illustrator, you have full access to the 3D CAD data. So this is imported as 3D and it is still accessible in full 3D. So you can rotate it, specify the view on screen. You have access, as you can see here on the left, to the model, to the assembly structure of that CAD file. So all the sub-assemblies and parts are listed here. So you can access that structure. You can turn on and off or collapse and expand certain branches in, in the tree. And of course, turn on and off elements based on that tree structure. And you can access the components or parts of sub-assemblies on screen as well. So for example, I can locate this part here and then move up to the to the sub-assembly and then turn on or off a whole sub-assembly or component of that model as I need. In Lattice 3D Studio CAD, when opening 
3D CAD files, you can specify views for ultimately creating technical illustrations from there. So when you get the 3D model, you may want to turn the attention to a specific part, create a specific angle for the view. Whatever you do there, of course, you can use standard isometric views, for example. Whenever you get to a view that should be transformed into a technical illustration later on, and then you will create a snapshot in this application. So there is actually already a few snapshots that I have created here. I can add one more that gets added to the list so that I can get back to this view whenever I need it. I could do one more thing here. Let's turn off this component again. Then I will update this snapshot right now. And the view is still the same, but the component display so whether or not I see a certain component of subassembly, that's also stored in that snapshot. So I haven't deleted anything. I can still go back to any view that I had before. And now when I go back to this snapshot that I just created, I will get that same view with the same components turned on or off so that I can easily create a technical illustration from here. There is much more in Lattice 3D Studio that you can do with 3D CAD files. So as said, everything you may want to use as an illustration later on or for, for other purposes, uh, creating a rendered bitmap or something like that, create a snapshot from that and that's stored with the file. You can do animations, disassembly use and, and things like that with Lattice 3D Studio. What this is good for when creating technical illustrations is that you may want or need to uh, document an assembly or maintenance instructions and show specific steps in that maintenance workflow. So assembling or disassembling certain parts and that can be done with Lattice 3D Studio and its animation tool set. So I have showed you this structure, the assembly tree, and this should not be touched by you for, for any purposes as uh, the engineers may come back with a revision later on, which uses that assembly structure that they uh, have created. And then you will need this assembly structure as is. Now, in case your maintenance instructions that you need to create need another structure for disassembling the elements, not in, in that structure the engineering uh, team has created, uh, you can create your own structures for managing those disassemblies or more complex processes. I have done that before, so I have prepared this 3D model to show you a process animation that then can be used for illustrating specific steps within this animated workflow, this process. The tree structure that you see here is similar to the engineering tree, to the assembly tree uh, that I have uh, opened the file with, but it has certain modified elements where uh, there is objects or components grouped that are not in the same tree structure in the engineering bomb. So um, I had to make some changes and that's where I created a separate assembly process. And uh, with that process, I can then run an animation that follows the steps that are set up here in this process, pretty much following the assembly structure, but again, with a few modifications in there. So I can go to this animation that has been created automatically from the modified tree structure from that process tree. When editing that, you see this keyframe animation tool below here. And uh, I will simply run that animation to show you what this could look like. That is a process animation that contains various steps or phases. Um, you see those thrust lines here um, that indicate the direction of the motion of the individual parts. A lot of that has been created automatically as the parts have a coordinate system. So when engineering worked well, the coordinate systems of those parts will uh, tell the application enough to move to translate those uh, components in a meaningful way so that there is very little manual work to come up with that animated assembly process in this step. And what I meant earlier when referring to what this is good for when creating a technical illustration, you can stop at any point here. You can change the, the view, uh, 
the, the camera, so I want to, to keep it that way uh, for now as it's the standard isometric view. And then you can create a new snapshot from there and it gets stored in my list of snapshots and then I can use it for illustrations later on. Let me close that animation at this point and go back to my snapshots panel. And there you see there is a new snapshot that will take me exactly to that view with those elements visible uh, as I had uh, recorded or taken that snapshot previously. And of course, as mentioned previously, I can go back to my other snapshots uh, at any time. Now, when I am fine with what I see on screen, and this is what I want to uh, use in a technical illustration, then I can send this snapshot to Corel Designer, the 2D illustration, vector illustration application uh, for working with a 2D vector illustration created from this view. When using this feature, you will see there is a lot of settings that I can uh, specify here. And uh, that's actually not something that you will do every time you create an illustration. So that's more of a preparation step that you do once. Um, I have done this here, uh, stored my presets, um, as you can see here, and that uh, uses the line weights as I need them. Uh, it creates fills and it uh, specifies the size of the elements as I want to, to output them. So this would create a view in this rectangular frame that you see here, and that would probably take a couple of minutes. So that's a rather complex file that I see here. So with creating the hidden line removal and the thick thin lining that takes too long for this presentation. So I want to jump right into what the result would look like. So when this sent to Corel Designer feature has been uh, completed, Corel Designer, the 2D illustration application will be launched and the vector illustration is imported into a drawing. I have used a template here uh, to make sure I create a an S1000D compliant um, graphics or illustration. So um, this is part of the Corel Designer X7. And uh, for example, I can use the general standards and in there you see the uh, various um, S1000D sizes that are available. Uh, so I have used a flexi height, I think. Uh, so this one, um, I will close that. Uh, so that template then gives you the, the right page size for your graphic. It uh, shows a few lines that uh, mark the, the minimum and the maximum height. It uh, has a placeholder for an ICN, uh, so the identifier um, is, uh, is in there as well, and uh, that can then be stored with a file name. This is what I've done here. And then I've imported this view from the 3D uh, CAD model in here. Now what you see here is a, a black and white drawing with one red uh, object. So um, this is not exactly uh, how it was imported. Um, when importing it from Lattice 3D Studio, um, you remember this was a colored uh, model or is a colored uh, model with colored components. And uh, the actual um, line drawing, the vector illustration will use those colors as well. So it supports uh, vector fills. And uh, I have applied one more step then here. I have uh, applied a white fill to everything. And then I uh, have picked one element to color it red to highlight it. And that's a very simple task with uh, the Coral Draw Graphics Suite tools as you can uh, still access the structure of that 3D file. So when looking at the imported file, that's uh, what you see here on the right in that object manager as the satellite process. Um, there is two main groups. And one of these groups, uh, when expanding that, you see those object names here. 
And that's the same names that the 3D components had in Lattice 3D Studio. So I can access the components here through that tree view, or I can access it uh, also in the UI. So for example, by clicking in here, um, I locate this object, and then I can apply a fill to this one as well. This is a 2D drawing. So when I when removing something here, um, there would not be uh, the rest of, of this um, red marked part uh, becoming available or visible. Um, that would just be a, a gap in the in the drawing. So um, mind that it's not a 3D model any longer. This is a 2D drawing. Um, it uses certain simplifications and uh, yeah, advanced illustration techniques like thick and thin lines. Uh, you see that here with the uh, thicker surface boundaries and then the, the thin lines so that it gets a more 3D type visualization in, in the 2D. It also simplifies certain elements, uh, which you can see here. So that depends on the settings um, that you're using when exporting, when sending this uh, view as an illustration to Corel Designer. You can generate very detailed views. Um, for this zoom level or size of the graphic, um, I picked this, this detail level um, to not uh, have too many lines uh, in there and uh, to, to have it uh, clearly understandable. Now, when looking at the structure once again, so you see that the uh, object structure, the assembly tree basically is still there. And that's a big benefit uh, when it comes to working with this illustration. So as a next step, you may need to add information to certain parts. Uh, that is typically done with callouts, as you can see here. So I can add further callouts using the uh, callout tool in Corel Designer. I want the callouts to use an automatic increment. So I start with number two, as I have created my number one callout already. And then I just pick a point here and move the callout there. And then the two is attached. There's the three. And then let's add one more. There's the number four. Let's just uh, check all the callouts by typing Control A. That will select all the objects of that tool type, so all callouts. And then I just apply a style so that they all use consistent formatting. And by using this style that uh, I have created in a style sheet, I can also make sure that this will be compliant to the S1000D as it uses the right line weight and everything else is correct. The character formatting font and font size and so on, that's all compliant to the S1000D business rules in that case. So there is more styles used in here, as you can see, and uh, that's actually I'm using style sets that uh, combine multiple settings, outline fill, line type, and so on. So this can all be specified and stored so that you have these styles, these style sheets available at any time, and you can load it with your templates so that you make sure you use those line weights and formatting rules uh, according to the, to the specifications at any time. I would like to go back to the 3D. This was a, a straightforward work so far, creating views and then sending this as illustrations. For showing a few more complex steps, I will open another file. And that's where I actually want to show you what Lattice 3D Studio CAD can do for you. So. Um, File formats that are supported, as you can see here, the long list with the plus prefix, that's what the uh, Lattice 3D Studio CAD add-on to the Corel Draw Technical Suite supports. So you can work with the native 3D CAD files. There is no need to ask for specific exchange file formats. And what's more important, there is no need to convert the files that the engineering team uh, creates to, to any file format. So you can use them as you get them and uh, work with that. Now, I will open a 
file again that has been opened as a SolidWorks file originally, and I have done a few things with it, so it already uses the XV2, that's the lattice uh, 3D Studio file format. This is highly compressed, so this uh, 270 kilobyte file, that's what originally was a 45 megabyte SolidWorks assembly. So this is roughly um, 0.5% of the original file size. Um, so these files are highly compressed and that is um, very relevant uh, for, for various workflows. So when you want to work with and publish 3D files, eventually on mobile devices, that's where this highly compressed file is beneficial and uh, makes those 3D files accessible in a mobile workflow. So let me open this file. It's a lot more simple compared to that uh, satellite that I had uh, had before, but uh, I want to show you a few mechanisms that will be uh, demonstrated with this with this file very easily. So again, this model has a number of components. It has a rather basic component structure. You can access it on screen or through that assembly tree. And uh, with this sample, again, I have done a few things before. So I've worked with that file. Um, I've created certain views. I have created a disassembly view. Very simple. Uh, what is also possible easily is creating cross sections that can be edited or created in many different ways. So let me edit this one. So there you can see how you can easily edit, change a cross section here you can uh, add up to six cross section planes. I don't want to modify it, so I just close it again. And uh, I have actually created two illustrations from this uh, example one illustration with that section view, and the other one with the uh, assembled view. What you can see here as well right now is um, that uh, the rendering capabilities are quite advanced with uh, Latches 3D Studio, so you can also use it for creating photorealistic uh, renderings with the, with the shadow um, maps that you see here in this example. Um, so that's another use case for, uh, for Lattice 3D Studio, not necessarily for, for S1000D illustrations though. So with this example, um, I want to go back to Corel Designer the 2D illustration. So what I've done here is I've created a multi-page document with two illustrations. So imported the views from uh, 3D. I've added a few callouts um, as I have demonstrated that with the other example. And this is how uh, this looks like. And now imagine you have put all the work into these illustrations. You have created the, the views, uh, transformed it to illustrations, added content to it on the, on the 2D illustration side. Now the engineering team comes back with changes. Some modifications on the 3D side don't know exactly what has changed, but uh, in the end, the illustrations need to be updated to consider the changes uh, that the engineering team has made. Um, to show you these changes, I will look at the revision. This was a SOLIDWORKS file again, and just for uh, opening it more quickly, I have uh, opened it before this session and uh, saved it as XV2 compressed file. Um, as you can see here, there are certain changes. So there is wells uh, missing here and there. The color has changed. Um, maybe there are other changes. I don't know. Not that obvious. There are no snapshots. There is no process tree, no animation, nothing in this file as it's the raw engineering data that I received with those changes. Now, with Lattice 3D Studio and Coral Draw Technical Suite, I have a tool called Auto Detection and Update, which will help me to update everything that I have done with this 3D model. So I will compare the file that I have worked with, the 3D file, with an animation, with snapshots, with the cross-section views that I've showed you. Everything in there will be compared to the new revision that engineering uh, has provided and that I've just uh, opened in here. For comparing the two versions, I need 
some conditions. In my example, the part name is sufficient. If that's not the case, uh, you can add more complex conditions so you have full access to all of the metadata um, that may be uh, included with the components, and you can use that for identifying uh, the, the parts or matching the parts in the uh, two different versions that you're looking at. Now I let the application do its math, compare the two versions, and then you see a visual comparison on screen, and you have a before and after comparison as a, a spreadsheet type or list type uh, view. And when selecting an object here, you see it uh, highlighted in before and after state, and on screen you also see this red and the uh, blue marked um, instances that are overlaid so you can quickly identify what this is and yeah you can already um, get an idea of what this change is like. Now once you're happy with this uh, there's obviously more uh, if there is anything not matching you can uh, match components um, uh, manually by uh, using that list here and, and match them by their visual comparison. Things like that can be done. This is not necessary with this example, so I can apply the changes and execute this. Uh, I leave all those settings as is and uh, make you aware of this. You can update the illustrations in Corel Designer that have been created with that previous version of the CAD model. So I let this run now. And that uh, takes a moment as now everything is being recreated using the new revised 3D CAD model. The illustrations are being recreated. Uh, I have previously sent two vector illustrations to Corel Designer of two different views. And now I want to update those illustrations and everything else, the animation, uh, all the snapshots with the revised CAD model without starting from scratch and redoing all the work. So um, this would be the alternative um, to use the revised model and start new with creating the illustrations, uh, specifying the views and so on. This is not necessary. It's all done with that product. So now we should be ready in a couple of seconds, and then the Corel Designer application will be launched and the illustrations will now be updated. And uh, you can see the update on the 3D side, that's here. And uh, now let's have a look at the illustrations. That's what is updated in Corel Designer. So you see the missing wells and also these uh, holes, these wells seem to be larger than before. The green color is there. So everything has been considered also on uh, page two. That looks a little different though. There's something um, that didn't come across very well, but you see what uh, what happens? So the the updated model with the color again, uh, the cross section that has all come across. So you don't need to recreate that um, and, and replace everything manually um, just because of that uh, modified revised uh, engineering work. A quick last look at the uh, 3D side. Um, so everything has been updated. You see the snapshots in here. Uh, when I launch them again, um, it will all be using the new parts. Um, this disassembly view, also the cross section, um, this all uses the, um, the new parts, the new, uh, the, the changed parts and, and materials and whatever has changed in that 3D CAD model. Now going back to 2D illustration, and let's use the satellite example uh, once again. In the interest of time, so I have spent a lot of time in the, on the 3D side, and I want to spend the last four minutes at least uh, to show you how to deliver S1000D compliant illustrations from here. So 
what I have done here, imported a 3D cat uh, sourced illustration, added a few uh, items in here. I could add more and I want to actually add one, one more thing. Um, this view is not a standard isometric view. Uh, for some reason, um, I have uh, decided to use a, a very specific um, manual custom view for this. Um, and uh, I can work in isometric view in Corel Designer to add uh, items, but I can also use custom views here. So I have um, measured the dimensions of, of this one and actually let me turn on the grid so that we can uh, see what this is doing. Um, and now when turning to the top view in that uh, in that projection that I have again measured from the uh, from the elements in here then I can use my rectangle tool and for example create a square in that uh, projection move to the front projection add another square using the uh, snap and guide tools and a third square to uh, form a box now, one more thing I want to add here is uh, a well. That's the type of details that are uh, typically missing in, in 3D models. And in case you have to do a detailed illustration where this should should be uh, used as well, then you can use that well tool, for example. Let me snap to the 2.5 millimeters and then I specify the depth as two millimeters that I can specify here. Okay, and then uh, the pitch. Yeah, let me do a slightly smaller, shorter pitch. So that's how I can draw in uh, projected drawing modes in Corel Designer. And uh, then one more important thing. Let's turn off the grid again and move back to the orthographic mode. Um, hotspots, very important topic uh, for creating interactive CGM files for S1000D uh, documentation. So this is easily done in Corel Designer and that's what the uh, vector fills in the 3D import, the uh, sent to Corel Designer illustration feature are, are really uh, valuable for. So you can add hotspots um, to make uh, objects interactive, you can do that with with pretty much any any type of object in, in Corel Designer. Um, we use an object data Docker for this, but I want to actually use a macro um, that we have created for doing this, as it's uh, a little more convenient. So it shows the uh, data items that you need for S1000D hotspots, and um, I've selected the, the call out here, so I want to use that number one text and I leave it there. Uh, the APS ID should get assigned automatically, so I don't really need to care for that unless I want to specify as an APS ID uh, link. That should go to detail one and uh, the screen tip, yes. Okay. And I want to region, I'll leave that and create the hotspot. And there we go. Let's have a look at the object data where this is all specified. So this is how this would look like uh, as, as hotspot information. And you can do the same with uh, any graphical object. And that's what I have actually done with uh, this object already that was highlighted um, red, you can give it any color. Uh, it could also stay white, but still be uh, active as a hotspot. And with that, you can enter or edit uh, the hotspot information that is uh, required for the uh, interactive CGM output. At that point, when I'm ready with my drawing, um, actually, this doesn't really look ready. Uh, there is one more important thing missing. Uh, that is the uh, yeah the symbols that you typically use for uh, for S1000D illustrations. So, depending on the uh, on the 
intention. Of course, uh, I don't have a detailed view here. Um, if I were adding a, uh, a detailed view, I can uh, use the, the symbols here. So that symbol library that you see here, um, that actually uh, is a custom library that I have created um, this morning in the end. So uh, it is very simple to, to create uh, symbols like that and then you can use them in the drawing. Uh, and again, you can uh, add hotspots to this uh, graphical objects easily um, using a macro or uh, this object data manager Docker um, that I have showed you. And then let's stop here. And uh, then when the drawing is ready, all you need to do is to export that to the uh, CGM file format. And uh, there's very many profiles um, available for, for CGM output. And uh, for S1000D output, you would select the corresponding profile uh, in here. Um, other profiles that are supported for ATA iSpec uh, are listed here as the ATA Grex change profiles. So you pick the, uh, the right profile from this list, export to CGM, and that's all you, you need it to do. So the application will take care of uh, things like APS ID, uh, also the, the ICN will be included in the, uh, in the CGM metadata. Um, as, as needed, uh, so you will create valid CGM and by uh, paying attention to the business rules uh, in the object styles, for example, um, you will be able to make sure that your illustration itself is compliant uh, to S1000D using the right colors, using the right line thickness, uh, line styles, and so on. Um, in in the output. With that, I have used up my time, so I hope this was valuable information for you. I have not touched a lot of other options that the CorelDRAW Technical Suite applications provide, so there is more than just CGM output, uh, SVGs supported as well, but also 3D PDFs. So you can uh, create PDFs that contain illustrations, text, and interactive 3D that can use an Adobe Reader to walk through uh, 3D models and, and show the, the views interactively and show animations and so on. And there is even more that we do not cover in today's session, but there is more sessions to come. So Coral Draw Technical Suite is a very versatile suite of tools for uh, visual technical communication. Today you have seen the workflow from 3D CAD to a technical manual um, that is S1000D compliant or to a technical illustration as part of a technical manual. There is many other output options. There is many more tools than what you have seen today. So the 2D illustration application is uh, very powerful with regards to projected drawing, to creating callouts or creating whole illustrations when there is no 3D CAD source file available for, for creating an illustration. With that, I want to end today's session as said uh, multiple times. So you have only seen a small part of what CorelDRAW Technical Suite can do. So the Corel Designer and the Latches 3D Studio applications that what uh, I have used for my presentation today. There is a lot more also on the photo editing side, uh, which may, may be relevant to you as well. Uh, so there is a whole uh, photo editing application that uh, can do all the professional photo retouching, photo optimization image works that you may need to uh, include, incorporate bitmap images in your visual technical communication. With that, I want to thank you for your attention today, for taking time to watch this webinar. I hope there was valuable information in there for you. Thank you for today and goodbye.